All right, before we get into Unit 10, which is our next chapter, we want to do a prerequisite skills review with you. So the topics that we want to go over are graphing linear equations, writing linear equations from a table, writing equations from a word problem, and finding the percent of change. The reason why we're going to go over this, you've all seen it before, but we thought that we'd bring back these topics so that hopefully it'll help you out while um, learning Unit 10. So graphing the following equations. Looking at example one, we have y equals 3 halves x minus 4. If we remember back, the standard form would be y, e or slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. Our b is our y intercept, so where it's going to cross on the y axis, and our m is our slope. And if we remember, slope is rise over run when graphing. So let's take a look at example A. Negative 4 is going to be our y intercept, so we're going to go to 0, 0. We're going to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and plot our point. And then from there, we're going to calculate our slope. So we're going to go up 3 over 2. So 1, 2, 3 over 2, make our point. Up 3 over 2. And let's do one more. 1, 2, 3 over 2. All right, I always like to extend it on the opposite side as well, so I'm going to go down 3 over 2. Now what you need to do is take out a straight edge, connect your points, and then make sure that you put arrows on the end so that you can identify that that line goes on forever. Yours may be a little bit better than mine. but All right, now let's look at example B. Go to your y-intercept first. That's where you're always going to start. So we have positive 1. And then our slope is negative 2. Anytime you have a whole number, remember that's just the same as over 1. So we're going to go down 2 over 1. Even though it's negative, you're still going to go right 1. The negative is being taken care of by going down on the y-axis. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Then again, I'm going to extend mine the opposite way as well. And find your straight edge, connect your points, and make sure you get those arrows on the end. All right, the next one is a U-try, so you're going to save that one for tomorrow. And let's take a look at example two, writing a linear equation using the given table. All right, so looking at the table, you can always go ahead and find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be the point when the x equals to 0. So we have 0, 7, and for example b, we have 0, negative 4. Just kind of pointing those out first. All right, so to calculate the slope, because again, for writing the line, we need the y-intercept as well as the slope, you can do one of two things. You can take two points and use the formula for slope, which was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or I'm going to show you a shortcut. What you can do, you can go from, see the difference between the one point to the next. So from this x, negative 2, to negative 1, I added 1. And then from negative 1 to 0, I added 1. And from 0 to 1, I added 1. And from 1 to 2, I added 1. So as you can see, it is the same. So off to the side, I'm just going to put a 1. Okay, so then for our y, we also need to find the difference between these numbers. So we went from 3 to 5, so we added 2. From 5 to 7, we added 2. 7 to 9, we added 2. And 9 to 11, we added 2. So over here, we have a plus 2. So the difference between our x values was 1, and the difference between our y's was 2. So if we were to go ahead and write our equation, we would have y equals, now if we're talking about slope, these are the numbers we're going to be using, but if we look back at the formula, our difference of y goes on top. So you just need to flip these two numbers. So we're going to have 2 over 1, which is the same as 2, and then x, and then we need to put our y-intercept or our b, which would be 7. So we get y equals 2x plus 7 as our equation. All right, we're going to do the same process with B. 
All right, so let's look at the difference between our x's. We have negative 3 to negative 2, we add 1. Negative 2 to negative 1, we add 1. And so on, we are adding 1. All right, so off to 7 and for a little 1. All right, then for our y, I went from 5 to 2. This one's a little bit different because actually I'm decreasing with my numbers, so I'm subtracting 3. And then I'm going to do the same here, subtracting 3, and so on. So over here I have negative 3. All right, so if we're going to go ahead and write our equation, again, we have y equals... We're going to flip our x and y. You just need to always make sure that the y is on top. So we have negative 3. Now it's over 1, so you could just keep it that way. So we have negative 3x and then minus 4 because that is our y-intercept. This would be your equation. All right, that next you try, again, that one's for later on when you come back to class. Now we're going to look at writing an equation given a word problem. We're still going to want to use the form of y equals mx plus b when creating this problem. I'm going to go ahead and read it first. So it says, to rent a booth at the county fairgrounds, it costs $42 per day plus a one-time equipment fee of $85. Find the number of days Joe rented a booth if he paid a total of 337. So we're looking to find the amount of days that Joe rented this booth. So we're going to let our x equal days. I'm just shorting that a little bit, but we know it's the days rented. All right, so we know the total, if we're going to be setting this up, is going to be 337. So that's going to be our y. It has to be the total. Now, no matter what, we have to pay a one-time equipment fee of $85. So we're going to let that be our b because no matter what, it has to be added on to the end. Okay, so plus 85. And then it gave us the information of $42 per day. So since the days can vary, we know that that's going to be our m value. So we would have 42x plus 85. All right, so now from here, we're going to go ahead and solve for x because we still need to find the days. So we're going, this is just two-step equation. We're going to subtract 85 on over. Okay, so then over here, we should be left with 252 equals 42x. We need to get x by itself, so we're going to divide by 42. And x will turn out to be 6. Okay, so if we need to answer this, we would say that Joe rented his booth For six days. Now we do want you guys to write that out in a complete sentence, so please go ahead and do so in circle. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page on over. Looking at example B, we have Joe and Tom have their own cell phone. Okay, Joe's provider charges sixty dollars per month plus five cents per text message. Okay, Tom's provider, on the other hand, is $30 per month plus 15 cents per text message. How many text messages can they send in order to pay the same amount of money per month? All right, so again, I'm going to put that y equals mx plus b up here um, just so we can kind of always look back at it. All right, so no matter what, Joe has to pay $60 per month. So we know that no matter what, it's going to be plus 60. Now, the thing that's going to vary or have the variable is going to be the five cents per text. So we're going to have plus or um, point zero five for the text, and we have to identify that that x. Let me put that up here. X equals um, text messages. All right. So this would be the setup for Joe, and typically we would set that up equal to uh, y or to find our total. But we want it to equal the same amount as Tom. So we're going to be setting up our two equations equal to one another. So now we have to come up and or figure out what Tom's equation is going to look out like. So same thing, he had $30 per month. No matter what, he has to pay that. 
And the thing that's going to vary is his 15 cents per text message. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and solve for x. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 30 on over because we need to get the x's to one side and our constants on the other. So these are going to cancel. Let's rewrite. We get 0.05x plus 30 equals 0.15x. All right, again, we need to get the x's to one side, so I'm in the process of doing that, so I would subtract 0.05x from both sides. These will cancel. Okay, I'm going to bring my work up here now. So I have 30 equals 0.1x. All right, now again, we're getting x by itself. Last step would be to divide by 1, or 0.1, I'm sorry. And we get x equals 300. So we need to kind of make sense of this now. So they would have to text 300 text messages um, in order to pay the same amount of money. You need to write that down, please. There we go. Circle your answer. And go ahead and skip that you try. All right, here we go. Example four, finding the percent of change in a situation. So remember back to our old formula. Um, percent of change is going to be your new minus your old all over your old. Also something to remember, you always want to be talking about a percent and you need to indicate if it's an increase or a decrease. Okay, so let's take a look at example A. The price for gas at Shell went from 320 to 375. Find the percent of change. Okay, so it started at 320, so that's going to be our old, and then it went to 375, so that's going to be our new. So let's set this up. We have 375, we're going to subtract our old, which was 320, and then we're going to divide by our old, which was 320. Simplify your numerator, so you're going to subtract the two, you're going to get 55 cents all over 320. When you divide, okay, you're going to again have to make that into a percent, so you will get 2.3 percent, and since the price is going up, you want to look back at the original problem, the price is going up, so it would be a 2.3 percent increase. All right, let's look at example B. Today's Google stock started at 538.10 per share. By the end of the day, the new price was 525.60 per share. Find the percent of change. So this first price, this is going to be our old. This one's going to be our new. And let's set up our equation. So we have... Um, Sorry guys, my pen was freezing. Hold on, here we go. Okay, so we're starting with our new right here. Sorry. So we get 5, 25, 60, and we're subtracting our old. So we get 5, 38, 10. And then we divide by our old again, which was 5, 38, 10. All right, so you're going to subtract on top. Now, you are going to come out with a negative number, so it's going to be negative 12.5, and that's okay for right now. Um, we're going to divide again by $538.10. Now, when you divide here your percent, it may come out negative um, because we're dividing with a negative, but remember, percents are always going to be positive. So the percent that you are going to come up with is 20 or 2.3 and I just saw that I made a mistake. I apologize. Go back up here guys. When you divide, it shouldn't have been 2.3. That was the answer for the one be, um, under I was looking at my key as I was going. This one should have been 17.2%. Again, I apologize for that. Um, 
So for this one, it should be 2.3%. Now remember, percents are positive numbers, but we need to identify that this was a decrease. Okay, so this um, percent went down. So you need to identify that. So 2.3% decrease. All right, go ahead, skip that you try, and make sure that you answer these questions. These are a little bit different from the ones that you're used to seeing. It says, after watching this video, I remember how to do the following. So you're assessing yourself after going through all those examples and saying, okay, do I actually remember this or not? If you do not, or you may be struggling with it, if you could kind of make an, a star by the ones that you may need more help with, and then maybe write any questions that you have off to the side. All right. Um, please come on and see us if you have any questions, and we'll see you tomorrow.